All right, and everybody should uh, be in here today for, um, and this is a title I didn't put out, but this is what I uh, called it when I did this several years ago, um, Women Rule, Women's Fiction Readers Advisory. So um, if you're in here, that's what it's for. If you're in the room and that's not what you signed up for, you can stay and learn about Women's Fiction Readers Advisory anyways. Um, so, and I haven't gotten quite fancy enough to do polls and everything yet, but if y'all want to chat into the, um, chat box, um, does anybody consider themselves a women's fiction reader or, um, or do you have a favorite author with women's fiction? So if you all want to share, please, um. Go ahead. That's a good thing, again, about um, all being together and doing this is um, we can kind of um, communicate through chat and uh, have an ongoing dialogue. Me, personally, um, women's fiction is probably one of my, probably my second favorite genre kind of to uh, read through with mystery, suspense, thriller being my first uh, main one, and I think more with women's fiction, another kind of offshoot, I think of general fiction would be also called um, domestic fiction. Sometimes domestic fiction and women's fiction can kind of um, go together. So yeah, I like Jennifer Cruzy too. Okay, that's all right. So hopefully, Patricia, we will uh, learn a little bit more. And a lot of readers' advisory, no matter what, is just learning about all the different ones so that when you do have patrons come into your library um, asking for like, oh, I just got finished reading this great, um, I'm trying to think of a, like, I don't know, John Grisham sticking in my mind right now, um, you know, book, I want, you know, something else like his books. You know, once they've read all of his books, you know, they want somebody else. Legal yeah, legal thrillers. Then yeah. um, you can point them in the right direction. So, but um, as Nancy always um, uh, says in her reader's advisor, I think it's a good thing um, as well. You don't have to be, you know, an expert in all the genres, but maybe just try to read one from each one and just kind of get a feel for it. I've yet to do that with, say, Westerns, per se. That's probably one of my least favorite genres, but everybody's different, so... So, but um, so, but we will go ahead and get started. Thank you all very much. Oh, Mary Kay Andrews, I'm right there with you, Paul. She is one of my favorites. Fanny Flag, I need to read more of hers. And Misty, um, I like Nora Roberts. Well, I haven't read too many Debbie Maycomer, but she's on my book. I mean, she's on my list. Sorry, my coffee's not helping very much yet. So, all right, so we're gonna delve into the world of women's fiction a little bit more. So uh, just a little bit of an introduction, um, kind of think about this yourself, and you can definitely um, chat this into the chat box. What does women's fiction mean to you? What is, when you hear the term women's fiction, what is that, uh, you know, kind of what pops into your head? Now, um, and I think this has been around for a while, but I recently um, read a little uh, novelist blog, actually, that Nancy sent my way, so I get kudos to Nancy for sending me a couple um, different uh, tidbits of information, which I'll pass along to you all as well, that women's fiction, they're kind of, um, that still works as a search term, but they're also kind of replacing that term with women's lives and relationships. So um, that, you know, like I said, women's fiction can be synonymous and is with women's lives and relationships. Um, and women's fiction, and also an offshoot of that, which we're going to talk about, is the chick lit. And some of them consider it an umbrella term that kind of it fits quite a few things. Um, but one of the definitions is it's a body of literature that focuses on women's lives and relationships. There's that term again. Such things as family, friends, careers, empowerment, aging, different things like that. So when we're talking about um, its literature or, and I don't mean that in the scholarly sense, but basically it's fiction that focuses on women's lives and relationships. Um, some of the uh, things with women fiction argument is, can a man write women's fiction? Is a man 
you know, do you think a man's well adept en enough to um, write about women's lives and relationships? And there's arguments on um, both sides, and um, but one of the uh, sources that um, I read about this topic, a few good books, said that uh, women's fiction can be written by both men and women, and they uh, one of the authors, which is just kind of he's always been one. I think it's hard to kind of figure out where exactly he does fit in. Is good old Nicholas Sparks. Um, some people consider him a romance writer. Like I said, in this particular resource, they were saying, yeah, he could be considered um, under the umbrella of women's fiction. I don't know exactly where Nicholas Sparks would put himself at. I think he's probably in some interviews and stuff stated where he thinks he fits in. Um, and then some people say that uh, women's fiction, of course, is written for both men and women. But, um, of course, the main um, character in any women's fiction, of course, is going to be a woman. So, and that's where the point of view is going to come from, too. And um, as we'll talk about later, of course, women's fiction, it's a large umbrella term again for, um, it's got a lot, a lot of other um, genres in it as well. And it's not, it has some feminist issues in it, but it's not considered feminist literature. So, um, and they're thinking that um, kind of the beginnings of it started with Jane Austen and uh, her contemporaries and also um, Virginia Woolf. So, um, like I said, there's some of those there. So, all right, we've talked about this a little bit um, already. Uh, like I said, it's um, usually a very character-centered uh, genre. And most of the, um, of course, definitely the main character and a lot of the secondary characters are being female. And it's usually from that main character's point of view. You really don't get a lot of... Um, the man's, of course, men's point of view in it. Um, and then key elements of the plot is, of course, women's emotions and relationships. And um, one librarian said the way you can test it is if it's women's fiction, a uh, question you can ask, is the main female character easily swapped out for a male character? If she's not, then more than likely it's um, women's fiction. But like I said, you can get um, a general feel... Um, for all of that um, to decide. Yep, there you go. All right. And some of the things we like about women's fiction, um, there's different elements um, in there. It's definitely something that um, possibly grew out of the um, romance traditions, um, but, of course, it goes kind of beyond that. It's not necessarily... Um, you know, happily ever after, like you said, women's fiction is not romance. Um, like I said, the main uh, point of the story is not, you know, falling in love and all of that. Um, you don't hear much from the man's side. And um, usually there's some personal growth for that uh, female character. Um, so um, up there at the top, some elements in there that people uh, might be attracted to as far as wanting to read women's fiction. And then some of the um, appeal characteristics there. Usually the character is going through some sort of, you know, dealing with some sort of issue or problem. And um, what they say about women's fiction that at least women really like about it is it's very relatable. They usually can relate to that main um, character. So that's a lot of it. And like Nancy said, um, it's the strong characterization and the storyline. And then to a lesser degree, um, the mood or tone might be um, important to somebody that's looking for to read um, women's fiction. All right. Some early forerunners here. We're going to get into some history of it. Um, so early forerunners were some of the early feminist writers, 19th century writers of domestic fiction. Um, so you got, of course, Jane Austen is considered one of the um, original ones with Sense and Sensibility. 
Um, Suzanne, Susanna Ralston's Charlotte Temple is one of the first um, bestsellers in America that was 1794 for women's fiction. Um, and then, of course, you got um, Jane Eyre and uh, Little Women. And then some early other early forerunners is The Awakening by Kate Chopin, Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, and even in 1936, Gone with the Wind by Margaret um, Mitchell. So in the 40s and the 60s, um, you get into um, kind of like when women started uh, going from working in the home to working at work, and then 70s and 80s, and we'll get into these uh, specifically here um, in a minute, talking about these these major big um, areas of women's fiction. So uh, there we go there, and that's actually, like I said, you can see some of those um, um, titles and authors um, with the dates and everything. So we talked about the early forerunners there. And now we're going to talk about the 40s and the 60s, where, uh, again, like I said, women that transition from women being at home to women going into the um, workplace. So here we're talking about working outside the home and exploring uh, women's sexuality a little bit more. So there are some um, kind of authors and titles that kind of epitomize this particular era of women's fiction right there. And, of course, a lot of, one of the bigger ones, a couple of the big ones there that I know I've um, heard of is, of course, Peyton Place and then the Valley of the Dolls. So still on my list to get around to reading sometime. So if you all have read those, um, I'd be curious to see. Um, there was an, one author, Elizabeth Cadell, Cattle, however said, her books are out of print, but she um, wrote during the 1940s and 80s. So unless she, unless you have her older titles in your library still, those she might be a little bit harder to find. So I don't know if you, she'd be necessarily one you'd want to recommend too much, unless they can find her books somewhere at a used bookstore. So... Moving from the 40s and the 60s, we're going to go to the 70s and the 80s. This is when you get uh, the rise of like the family saga books, a um, little bit more feminism, and then the glitz and the glamour. So you got Judy Bloom. She explores um, sex and feminism in her novel, Wifey. And then uh, another Fear of Flying is a really big one as well. So the 80s, of course, is considered the me decade and more the glitz and the glamour. So there's where you get the Jackie Collins and the Danielle Steele, which um, sometimes she's put in romance, but um, oh, she's more, from what one article said, more women's fiction because she deals with more than just romance in her novels. I don't think I've ever read a Danielle Steele novel. Um, just has never been one of you know, those I've ever been real interested in reading. But um, from what I've read, she does more of the sagas um, as well. And then uh, Judith Krantz is another one. And then some big saga writers, Judith Michaels, Barbara Taylor Bradford, and Helen Van Slyke. So there's some novels, and there's some of your 70s and 80s. So... Now we're going to move into um, a little bit more current times here. Now, one of the novels that kind of bridges the 80s into the late 90s and uh, mid-2000s is um, The First Wives Club by Olivia Goldsmith. I think it was released in 1992. So one um, article I read recently um, had mentioned um, that one. I, again, that's another one of those I need to read. I remember the movie, so <laughs> which I usually don't say that, but I do remember the movie on that one. But here, more contemporary times, late 90s through mid-2000s. Um, of course, modern day, Oprah Winfrey and her book club has been around for a while, and um, I'm not quite sure how long it's been around, but of course, Reese Witherspoon's got her own book club uh, now as well, and I think it's the lady from Harry Potter, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, hides the books, hides a book different places for people to discover. Maybe I'm totally 
remembering that wrong. So y'all chime in um, if y'all know if I'm talking about the right thing or not. <laughs> so, um, so some of the authors that Oprah Winfrey has kind of had, um, co of course, Toni Morrison um, and Anita Shreve, uh, of course, big uh, authors in women's fiction. And then uh, Chris Bohan, Bohalian, I'm probably massacring that last name. And I'm bad. I'm assuming Chris is a man, but I could be wrong. Chris could be female. Um, I have it in my notes here somewhere. So let me see if I can find it fast enough. Okay. And um, usually um, with this new millennium um, books, of course, they're contemporary setting. They're still character-centered. Um, you're getting a little bit more multicultural uh, themes in them because they are ref the books are reflecting what is happening in the world and society at the time. So they can it's kind of considered Bridget Jones' Diary is con kind of considered the forerunner for Chicklet, and then of course the TV series Sex in the City, which of course were based on Candace Bushnell's um, books. So, um, what you get here is um, kind of a movement from chiclet. So, you're talking about women, say, in their early to mid-20s to chiclet grows up. So, you're moving into the um, middle age. Some of it's um, evolved into what they call mommy lit. And then there's hen lit. And there's also considered widow lit. So that's where chick lit grows up. We become mommies, hens, and then widows. Um, so, and some of these uh, will have, um, it's just not that one main character. You have usually have an ensemble fiction where you have a group of, of uh, strong females. And then some of the books, of course, go into, I guess, what you consider um, stereotypical women, um, pursuits like crafts and cooking. There are some issue-driven fiction. And then about around 2010, you have the rise of the Beach House novels, where it's the novel you would bring when you escape to the beach, which I'm totally on board with. So, <laughs> I'm down with the beach books. So, so that's a little bit more of, or more contemporary history of women's fiction. Now we're going to get into um, some of the um, actual authors and subgenres of this particular um, women's fiction. So subgenre of women's fiction is those that are considered the grand dames and the pioneers of women's fiction. Um, usually the requirements to fit in this subgenre is you had to have had a multi-decade career, so you got to been have doing this for a while. Um, multiple novels with bestseller status, and pretty much those bestsellers um, have shaped or defined women's fiction in one way um, or another. So just have a list down there of some uh, grand dames and uh, pioneer um, authors there. So see if there's any down there that you all have um, read. Y'all can chime in with that. I know uh, I said Nancy's going to type in. I um, just started my first Maeve Benchy um, novel. Read some Fern Michaels. Read some Nora Roberts. I think I've read a couple Sandra Brown. And I got Barbara Taylor Bradford, a couple of her titles, newer titles, uh, on my list to read. So if you all have um, any uh, ones from this list that you all would suggest, that would be um, really good. Okay. Yep. Reading some of the, the comments over there. So if y'all have any favorites from the Grand Dames and the Pioneers, y'all can chat those in. Alright. So, we're going to move on here to um, some chiclet authors. And I have a whole list of authors and things like that and I think I'm actually going to do what I've said I'm going to do before and I'm going to type these all up and I'm going to send these um, out because there's a lot that 
on here that I can't put in all these uh, screens. So, of course, for uh, Chicklet, um, Bridget Jones, Sex and the City are the um, foundational or Candace Bushnell's series of books for this particular uh, genre. And then, um, of course, Bridget Jones' Diary. Oops, sorry, got to move my leg. Um, is British, so the they consider the American founding mother is Erica Jong with Fear of Flying. And these usually uh, are centered about the everyday working uh, women. Usually it's going to be your younger uh, crowd. Most of them are uh, done in a breezy, uh, light style. So they're not real super serious, or if they have super serious um, issues in them, they're treated in a little bit um, lighter of a manner. And they do um, call upon a lot of popular entertainment um, in them as well. Okay. So I'm reading over my notes to make sure I'm not um, uh, missing anything. Um, sometimes love can be central to the plot, but it doesn't necessarily mean end in uh, happily ever after. Um, and sometimes with Chicklet, the main character, um, they say, is more likable because of their um, enduring faults and not that they are perfect. So they're fallible human beings, but they're cute and quirky enough that you like them anyways. So and I've read, uh, of course, Bridget Jones, Emily Giffen's one of my favorites. I've read The Nanny Diaries. I can't remember if I've read anything by Sophie Kinsella or not, but... And I have done Devil Wears Prada. So some of these, like I said, are nice, light, you know, fun reads with quirky characters. Oh, Stephanie better end up with Ranger. That's all I got to say about that. I haven't read those in a long time. Sorry, I'm reading. <laughs> I'm reading the, um, just a little bit more about Chick Lick. Like I said, humor is usually witty. It's very tongue-in-cheek. Um... It's kind of a little bit fallen out of popularity, um, so more recent ones probably a little bit harder to find. Um, and, of course, again, going from that age continuum, um, chiclet, early 20s and 30s into um, becoming moms. Um, Sister Lit is uh, African-American-focused uh, characters, and then um, Hen Lit. So there's some authors there, and I've probably read about all but one of them. So if y'all have any um, favors or favorites in this one as well, y'all go ahead and um, chat those in. All right, next genre here is um, issue driven. And, of course, these are, you know, you can definitely find this in general fiction, too. But, of course, here for women's fiction, it's going to be have that female-centered um, character. And this became more popular um, due to Oprah's uh, book club. And, again, has um, a strong storyline. Usually it's going to deal with family and personal issues. Usually it's fast-paced. Um, and one of the main authors that comes to mind with this particular genre is Jodi Picoult, if y'all have ever read any of um, hers. She's down there in the author's um, category there. Um, so, like I said, usually it's, they're very emotional uh, books. Um, and then they're kind of the rule breaker in this particular genre is they also may have a male protagonist that's as strong as the female protagonist. So you are going to see um, probably not just a woman um, main character, but also a man main character um, as well. So there are some authors that kind of um, define this particular subgenre of women's fiction. All right. And then another one is humorous. So a little bit different from um, Chicklet. Both of them share um, humor quality. Um, usually some of these characters, um, as you can see, Sophie Kinsella kind of um, goes between um, both uh, categories. Um, but you have characters of all ages, and usually, again, it's kind of that witty, snappy um, dialogue. 
still some contemporary, a lot of them more contemporary settings, and usually a wacky plot. Might be, you know, some not really super big suspense or intrigue, but just kind of like, you know, misdirection and misunderstanding and uh, different things um, like that. But again, a very lighthearted, um, you know, different kind of um, characters for that one. So again, there's some favorite authors that kind of land in this genre there for you. All right. Now we're going to get into the romantic. So for romantic here, um, usually it does have a love story in it. Um, of course, again, it doesn't have to have um, a happy ending. And even though it's considered romantic, it's not a romance. So romance is still not the main plot point um, in there. So um, some authors and titles here and that uh, one of the resources um, I've used for research called, called John Reflecting usually had some what they considered must reads and their main must read for this particular genre is P.S. I love you so if you <laughs> she's shaking her head no okay she has not read that one so she's going to be adding to her list two <laughs> of uh, authors to read so if you're going to get into women's fiction I guess then this particular book Suggest that if you want a good example of the romantic subgenre to read P.S. I love you And I could tell I have this wrong there was one of her books. I'm pretty sure that they based a Movie on I don't know if it was called P.S. I love you and I can't quite remember the two main characters I want to say Gerard Butler is in it, but I could be totally wrong about that. So you all let me know uh, What I'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that they did have a movie. Okay, thank you. My mind's not as awful as I thought. Yay! I love it. I'm not totally slipping. So, um, all right. And then if you do have um, some patrons that like their gentle reads, um, and maybe not necessarily your cozy mystery readers, but... Um, maybe, maybe some of your uh, Christian fiction readers might like some of these gentle reads. Okay, Nancy's good. Yeah, we have lots of book kits that have some of these authors in it. Um, usually, of course, these are about families, communities, enduring friendships. Um, pace is usually kind of light and leisurely. They're still, like I said, not heavy reads. Um, they're kind of what uh, one source called the comfort food of women's fiction. There's usually not any graphic sex. There's not profanity or violence. Usually they carry a hopeful tone or message. And these usually also have um, a happy ending um, as well. So if you're looking for something that has a happy ending um, and like I said doesn't have um, a lot of the profanity, violence, graphic sex, something like that, this is the place to steer, steer people. So um, some of the main authors in this particular subgenre are listed there. The must read for this particular one is White Thorn Woods by Maeve Benchy. So maybe I need to read that one first instead of doing evening class. So, but yes. And like you said, yeah, Miss Julia, I think uh, there by Ann B. Ross is a big favorite. And I think there's quite a bit in that series, isn't there, Nancy? Yep. Good news. So that's our gentle reads. Oops. Move the mouse off my little thing. All right. All right. And some multicultural. So this is um, a subgenre that's um, thankfully been around for a long time. Um, and hopefully is around for. A lot longer and um, there's just a list here of some popular um, authors that um, fall into these categories which is if you have somebody coming in looking for um, women's fiction with a little bit more uh, multicultural um, edge to them 
um, some African American authors there, and then some Asian American authors, East Indian American authors, and then some Latina authors. Sorry, I had to get a drink of water. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, and I'm not, um, I have to say I'm not as good in this area as I should be. Um, I like Terry McMillan. Um, I have one on with Pearl Cleage Clage that I'm trying to eventually get into reading. And I have to say I've never read anything by Amy Tan. I need to. Excuse me, so I need to do better on my multicultural. So that's a good question. If y'all have any patrons coming in asking for this. All right. Now we're going to move on to um, some of the um, family sagas. I'm trying to look for my notes and get my tickle in my throat to subside here. All right. So again, these are the ones that say more popular in the 70s and the 80s. <coughs> a couple um, must-read sagas are Just Rewards, and that's part of the Hart Family series, and uh, Roses there. Um, of course, with it being uh, called family fiction, it's the family is a common and main theme. Um, in the books and um, there's some uh, must read family fictions there by Claire Cook we've seen her as an author and some of the um, other she was under the humorous and then uh, there's Christina Riggle and then um, <laughs> I know I want to say wiggle instead of wriggle um, and then a few other family fiction reads uh, there I really like Jan Green, um, and then Jennifer um, Weiner, I like her. One of the, uh, this one suggests Then Came You, one of the, uh, her titles that's an overall women's fiction to um, read by her is um, Best Friends Forever. So there's a couple titles um, by her. All right, and then usually popular amongst almost all um, genres is the genre blends. So um, this is where um, you have uh, books that contain some of the elements of women's fiction, but also contain elements of other genres. So there is Christian um, women's fiction there. <coughs> Um, but of course all of them um, they might vary in tone of content but all of them share main plot points so of course we're going to have your strong Christian values um, and renewal of faith which is common for um, Christian fiction and um, some authors there that kind of like I said bridge the gap they're definitely Christian fiction authors, but also can be considered uh, women's fiction authors as um, well. Are listed there, and I have a typo. I need to capitalize Warren. <laughs> okay. And I'm trying to see. Now, Kristen uh, Billerbeck there under the Christian women's fiction. She um, is considered Christian chick lit, and um, she writes for adults and teens. So she might be one if you all have some teens um, that like uh, Christian fiction. Might be one y'all can uh, point out. Uh, Colleen Coble, she um, kind of has some historical um, bends to hers, has a romantic feel to it. Um, and she, she's more contemporary, has some contemporary, um, actually, never mind, Kristen's the contemporary. Colleen is the historical fiction. I can't read my own handwriting. 
Um, and then Robin Jones Guns, known for her Sister Chick series. So I've seen the covers of those, and they all look like they'd be fun. Uh, Dee Henderson um, got some romantic suspense with Christian themes. Um, usually her characters are in high stakes jobs. So, like, again, like I said, that people like that suspense uh, part with, and Christian themes, she'd be a good one. And then uh, Karen Kingsbury, of course, is known. She's got some of her novels are issue driven fiction. Of course, still has the Christian content and themes. And usually she's got a little bit of romance um, thrown in there as well. So, all right, for historical women's fiction, um, uses the definition for historical fiction that has to be written at least um, 50 years after. The book doesn't have to be whatever the events in the book are have to be written at least 50 years after the actual events occurred in history. Um, so there's um, some of those um, authors there. Um, and I know uh, Nancy Horn, she's done, forget, and she might have a more recent one out now. I know she's done one, I think, based on... I can't remember if it's Frank Lloyd Wright, maybe that one too, and Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, and then, I don't know if actually a contemporary one that I particularly like that might be called, considered historical women's fiction is, um, I think it's pa Paula McLean, and she's done Circling the Sun. She's got a new one out now, coming out soon, I can't remember. And she also did The Paris Wife. So, Okay. All right, thank y'all for chatting in there. Need some fun. <laughs> Paul and I are planning a field trip. Good. We're going to sneak out and read our books the rest of the day. <laughs> I know, this makes you want to go read instead of having to go back to work. So, And then um, one of our last genre blends here is romantic suspense. Um, of course, still got that strong female character. Of course, you're going to have some romance. And you're going to have some suspense, either escaping from peril or solving a mystery um, there. So there's some authors um, there that fit in with that. And definitely, you know, I've never read any of them, uh, the J.D. Robb series, Nora Roberts um, ones, too. They're on my list of ones to read eventually. So... I think we're all going to have to go on Nancy and Paula's field trip, it sounds like. I just saw snacks were mentioned. <laughs> so, um, and actually, before we go to uh, new titles, um, we're going to go back on one of the genre blends. Uh, on here, I forgot to mention another category is um, what they call um, outliers, kind of have a different... Um, they're still a, a genre blend, but they're kind of some of them more like fantasy, um, sci-fi, different things um, like that. And so some of those, which like I said, I'll send along in a list. And actually one of the authors on here, Barbara Kingsolver, is one of our own Kentucky authors. And she was also mentioned as a um, women's fiction must read for um, her... Uh, book the bean trees so but kind of some of your outliers you're going to find like your mary janice davidson for queen betsy series uh charlene harris falls in here um alice hoffman um jane smiley ann tyler julia alvarez um charlene Baum bombish uh, Dearest Dorothy series. I know I've heard of Dearest Dorothy, um, the Dearest Dorothy series. Um, so just kind of uh, some outliers there that kind of straddle the line between other genres and considered um, women's fiction as well. I'm trying to think. I thought, um, what's her name from Outlander fame? was on this list, but I guess she's not. Maybe I'm thinking of something. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Darcy Coates fall. We're going to have to um I have to look up Darcy Coates. That's a new one for me, Patricia, so we'll have to do some research on that one. So good. I always like new authors. Darcy Coates, Women in Haunted Houses. That would probably be definitely, um, if she has strong female characters, I would definitely think she would be a genre blend. Um, and genre blend can be anything. It could be, you know, women's fiction blended with horror, you know, different things like that. Or if it's thriller, suspense, and it might be, she might be considered an outliers. Um, but like I said, as far as maybe recommending her to other, um, to patrons, it would be kind of like, okay, asking that patron, well, do you like, you know, strong female characters? Do you like, you know, supernatural, different things like that? Because that's kind of like what Charlene Harris does. Alice Hoffman, um, she's one of my particular favorites, um, has a little bit of uh, supernatural um, elements to her um, stories. So... Um, yeah, Nancy's gonna help you out there. She's gonna narrow it down because she's our she's our readers advisory guru. So, but um, one of the things that Nancy sent me recently had like the top ten women's fiction um, for uh, I think 2017. Some of these are 2018 um, titles. So I wanted to uh, give you all a list of these. Uh, some of them have already come out. Some of them are going to be coming out at least um, between now and. Uh, May or June of 2018. So um, if you um, have somebody looking for some new stuff coming out, they've read everything, and you know, you can they can look forward to um, some of these. Um, and so um, I know Marissa De Los Santos. Um, she had quite a few um, titles. Um, another big one, um, Susan Wiggs. Um, and then one of the really popular ones here, um, which I might, um, mess up this last name, is Jojo uh, Moyes, and she's the one, this still me, still the character from Me Before, me before You, me before you and then what was the second one, After You or something, but this is the same character that's been, um, in all of those. So this is like I think the third one where and I know they made a movie out of the I think the first book. So then there's Before and Again by Barbara Delinsky. Barbara Delinsky is another big name in general fiction um, as well. And she could also fall into women's fiction too. And then I don't know if anybody um, reads Allison Pearson. Um, this How Hard Can It Be is a sequel to one of her earlier works. I don't know how she does it. Same character. Uh, but we've gone from, this is kind of an example of, you know, chick lit from, I don't know how she does it when the main character's in her, you know, 20s, 30s, to now being a 50-year-old, um, you know, married kids, you know, dealing with um, aging parents, and how hard can it be? So there's kind of like, like I said, that growth or transition chiclet into, I guess, mommy lit, hen lit, um, different things there. So just some new titles that I wanted to um, let y'all know about that you might be able to... So nothing wrong with 50. 50 is good. <laughs> I figure if we've all survived that long, it's <laughs> even better than, you know, than anything else so um so while you're looking at that i'm gonna uh, move forward I'm gonna do um some of the resources um that i use and talk about that while i look through my notes real quick and make sure there was nothing that i missed telling you all about um but i got a lot of good information um from that a few good books and the genre reflecting those are both books um like i said i got some uh other ones there, the women's fiction chiclet, those were all uh, books. Uh, Book Reporter website's got some uh, good titles that uh, come out. And I need, I didn't have a chance to double check these, so if y'all go to these and they're not there anymore, I apologize 
profusely. That's bad librarian um, of me. So I didn't check those. Yes, Novelist is a good source, and that's um, and it might be. I can't remember if I have a second slide here um, or not. And um, I did mention Wikipedia. Um, I fuss at my kids all the time for using it. Um, but I have to admit, I do use it when I'm just trying to get like a general overview of um, a particular topic or subject before I do more in depth, particularly if it's something I don't know a whole lot about. So just don't ever tell my kids that I used it and we will be a okay. <laughs> so, um, and then I got some other, um, like I said, websites there and just kind of check and make sure that they're still. Um, still valid because I was a bad person and did not um, do that. And let's see. Okay. And so I want to say thank you. I didn't change it down there. But um, I will send this list out to you all. But if you all have pen and paper um, handy, I'll give you all some other um, authors if you just want to jot um, some of them down real quick. But like I said, I'll send out the complete list um, um, for you all. Um, some just general women's fiction authors. Um, of course, one that she's got, I think, some newer ones now. And this one also could be considered Southern fiction is Sarah Addison Allen. And she's the one that did Garden Spells, Sugar Queen, Peach Keeper, Girl Who Chased the Moon. Yeah. Yeah, we do have a lot of those in kits. And then um, one, Tilly Bagshaw. Um, she's kind of um, similar to Jackie Collins. She's got adored, famed, flawless, scandalous. Um, one of my personal favorites, which kind of is a uh, cross between women's fiction, domestic fiction, fiction is Elizabeth Berg. She usually writes about um, everyday life. So some of hers are like Open House, The Year of Pleasures, Tapestry of Fortunes. Um, of course, Barbara Taylor Bradford's big with the sagas. She has too many to list. You might just have to look her up. All right. Going back to those middle-aged women and their relationships. A good author for this is Elizabeth Buchanan. Um, she's got Revenge of the Middle-Aged Woman. And then another title of hers is Separate Beds. And then uh, Holly Chamberlain is another one. And then, like I said, Marissa De Los Santos, uh, she usually writes about friendship and family. She's the one on that list that's got um, a more recent title, but two of her um, former titles, Belong to Me and Falling Together. And then if you've got somebody that wants some British um, writing with a romantic feel, there's Harriet Evans. And then kind of another uh, southern author that deals with uh, coastal South Carolina and family and friends is Dorothea Bitten Frank. Um, now, uh, one author, um, Gail Godwin, um, has creative smart women dealing with adversity. So she's got one appropriately titled The Odd Woman and then Unfinished Desires. And then if you got somebody that's into relationships with broken secrets and some romance, there's Eileen Gu, G-O-U-D-G-E. Like I said, I'll just mention um, a couple of those because I'll send this to you all um, as a list. Um, Kristen Hanna, uh, she's kind of has fallen into the romantic subgenre, um, but she's... Uh, got a strong women's fiction elements in there as well. And she kind of has the, the tearjerker novels. So if you like somebody that likes a little crying with their reading, you've got Kristen Hanna with Firefly Lane and Night Reads. And she's got quite a few others um, since then. And then let's see, a throwback from the 70s. You've got somebody that wants some uh, saga and some issue-driven fiction, with a little bit of suspense, is Susan Isaacs with the Goldberg Variations. So, And then, let's see, so that's general. I've got a whole bunch more of those we won't um, 
go into all of them, but I will send you all um, that list, and you all can have that handy. And like I said, Nancy said, Novelist is a really good um, resource. They're one of the ones that's using the, um, instead of women's fiction, more using the women's lives and relationships. And I will send out um, something that Nancy sent me um, about, um, since March is Women's um, History Month, um, or Women's, yeah, Women's History Month, right? March. Okay, yes. Um, we're still in March. We're well, actually the Ides of March today. Um, so I'll send those out um, to you all. So, all right. Well, we are about done. So we are going to shift screens. Thank you all for being with us today. Hope you all learned something if you didn't you let me know on the survey which we are going to be flipping to next so your screens are gonna change all right and up there in the upper left hand corner we have the uh, survey link if you would just click on the title there women's fiction RA survey and then click on browse to it'll take you to it um, if you want the full presentation in PDF um, that's the box there in the upper middle of your screen again you just want to click on that title and then click download file the window will probably pop up um, possibly behind um, this particular one here but um, we really encourage you all to please um, do the survey this is where we know whether we um, gave you information that you needed that you liked if we didn't what we can do better different things that you would like to see us do um, webinars on if this is something that really helped you um, you know in your job or anything like that so um, we would really appreciate it so thank you all again for being with Nancy and I um, this morning um, we loved having you all and I forgot introductions at the beginning to introduce ourselves so I'll introduce ourselves at the end um, like I said, I'm Alicia McGrath. I'm one of the CE consultants um, here at KDLA. And um, Nancy Hassel is also another um, librarian we have um, here. And she's recently had some duties um, added to her list of all the other things that she does here. So I'm not really quite sure everything that Nancy does do, but she's doing quite a bit. So. <laughs> All right, she's a circulation queen. So if you all have kit questions, Nancy is your person to um, go to. And, of course, you all can use um, our Ask a Librarian um, and our kit request form on our website. So and if you have any other questions about KDLA or anything else, don't hesitate to contact myself or Nancy. If we don't know the answer, we will definitely steer you to um, the right person. Yeah, or she pointed down two rooms. We'll let you talk to Beth Milburn. So, <laughs> so. All right, everybody have a wonderful Thursday and a wonderful weekend coming up, and we hope to see you all some other time. Oh, and I will send out an email fairly soon because I finally got on the ball and got all my survey and certificate stuff done yesterday. So over the next couple of days, you will have your certificate for this class. If you don't, Email me and let me know. <coughs> A good reminder never hurts. So thank you all very much.